Okay, the reason why that wasn't showing up um, after you loaded that family is because we're still in the mass editor. If you just click finish mass, it'll pop out of the mass editor and um, uh, the family editor for the mass and um, and there, there's the geometry that we've created. Okay, so it's facing around the wrong way and also I wanted to show you how you could make some different family types. So with it before it's um, we twist it around the right way, you can see how it's a little bit chunky at this sort of scale here. So if I go down to the family down through here under curtain panels, trust braced and open up that one. Here's the one that we've created a frame of 65 with a brace of 25. If I right click on that and duplicate, I can make another one now, which I'll call, let's say, a frame of 45. And uh, we'll make a frame, I think we'll make a frame of 50. Make a nice round number. Uh, frame of 50. And I might make my bracing elements now 18. Something quite a lot uh, slimmer. So if I select this element here now, I can't get into the actual family to change it here at the moment because I've got to edit that model. But if I edit it, we're editing the mass again, this is where I can now select the divided surface which represents our curtain wall and I can drop this type selector down and here's the other one that I've just made. Brace of fifth up. Oh, actually what I didn't do, I better change the edit those two. Here's this one frame of 15 brace of 18. I just changed the name. I should have a look at the type properties there as well. And for frame of 50 and brace of 18, obviously I want the frame diameter to be 50 and the brace diameter to be 18. And click OK for that. And that has slimmed everything down for me. We've got a, we've got a couple of different um, versions that you could sort of try. So you could have a look at that one. That, and that view. And I could select it here now and go back and change this now to the frame of 65 and the brace of 25, which thickens everything up. And try it again, and I think I'm going to go back and put mine to the frame of 50 and the brace of 18. Okay, now it's rotated the wrong way, so I want the, I want this um, truss element on the inside. So what I'll do is I'll go to a floor plan view at the lower level. Um, and I could select this element here and I can rotate it, click up my rotate tool. It appears to be nicely placed in the centre at the moment, so I should just be able to pick a starting point of a rotation, give it a rotation direction and type 180 and press enter. And that has rotated my curtain wall around the right direction as well. Now. This truss element's not actually giving the wall any extra strength. What we're going to have to do is join the apexes of these truss elements with another element, and we'll do that using an adaptive component in the next video. But we can, at this stage, finish our mass, turn back into the 3D view, and you can now see the effect that we're creating. Well, I'm going to go back to a floor plan view. I think I'd like to establish this guy. I'm just using my nudge, to, my arrows to nudge this like that, so it's inside those blade walls a little bit. And I would have to look at it like that. And I reckon that's um, not not a bad not a bad effort for a a custom designed curtain wall panel. Uh, something that Revit's normal curtain wall panels obviously can't do, but you can use these techniques to just about model any sort of geometry. Well, not just about, I'd say you could model any sort of geometry that you can think about. So in the next video, we're just going to join the apexes across the back of here with an adaptive component.